good evening, everybody. Welcome to Youth. If I've not met you yet, my name is Jeremiah. I'm the youth pastor here, and it is great to see you guys tonight. Hi, Alan. I'm excited to see you too. Um, so hopefully you guys all took part in Overload Sunday this morning and were at service. If you've not gotten to join us for that yet, please do every Sunday now until Easter at 10.30 up in the loft. We're getting together and having games, food, all that type of stuff. And then we're overloading that 11 o'clock service with students. And there's a couple reasons why we're doing that. Number one is because we're a part of Crossroads and we want them to know that we're here and all that type of stuff. Um, and number two is we are actually doing the same series. So on Sunday morning, you can come and you can hear somebody preach about it. This week, it was a dashingly good looking dude who was up there. Um, just k- killing it. Yeah, he did awesome. Um, nice fans, nice beard. Yeah, he was a great, great guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, now he's on one foot. Um, so I was up there preaching this morning. Um, Tyler was up there doing announcements. Noah was helping lead worship, all that type of stuff. So make sure you guys are coming, getting plugged in on Sunday morning. And um, hey, on Sundays, a super easy thing to do if you're not already doing it is actually serve during the nine o'clock service. Several of you already do in different places and then attend the 11 o'clock service together. And then you can probably tag along with Mama T and her gaggle of kids who go and get lunch. There's a group who come to our house and have lunch, all that type of stuff. Like our goal is to be here and to connect with each other on Sunday morning. So if you were there this morning, uh, I want to give everybody else the same type of background for the passage you guys are going to go do a Bible study on. You guys don't need to hear me preach this same passage twice. And throughout this whole series, you guys don't have to sit and listen to preaching. You get to actually go and study Scripture together. So um, today we are looking at a passage between Jesus, really important person in the Bible. Hopefully you know who he is. And one of his disciples named Judas. Now we're looking at a guy named Judas Iscariot. Everybody say Iscariot. If you've been around church for a while, you might have heard of him. If you have not, then his name might be brand new. Basically, Judas was one of Jesus' followers, the people who were closest to him. And in the story you guys are going to look at, he's going to betray Jesus, which ultimately leads to Jesus' death. Now, as we talk about Jesus and Judas, the star of the story is Jesus, not Judas. And as you guys look at that story, there are three kind of themes I want you guys to look out for. Now, these words aren't explicitly said. They're themes of Scripture. And that's mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Now, let's see, those of you who were here this morning, you guys can remember the definitions for those words. The first one is mercy, which we said is what? Does anybody remember? Not getting what you deserve. That's exactly right. And then we talked about grace, which is getting something you don't deserve. And then forgiveness is ultimately that restoration. Now, here's an example of how kind of all of that works. It's in God's mercy that he doesn't just outright punish us all for our sin, right? Scripture says the wages of sin is death. That is mercy. But it's in his grace that he gives us a gift, Jesus, to make a way to ultimately have forgiveness. So all three of those things run together, and you're going to see mercy and grace come from Jesus multiple times, and then you're going to see Judas whenever he decides he needs forgiveness and what he does. So you guys are about to head to your small groups. There are paper Bibles over here. Please grab an actual Bible. We don't want your phones out. And there is a group for everyone. So if you're not sure what group you're supposed to go to, you can come up here and talk to me. Let's pray, and then we'll head to our groups. Father, we come before you and just thank you for today. We thank you for the chance to gather and to worship and now to go and study your word. Father, we pray that your spirit is here and that it moves during our groups. In your son's name we pray. Everybody says, amen. Go and enjoy your groups. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Crossroads Youth YouTube channel. Hope you guys enjoyed and got a better look into the message that we're going to be diving into today as you listen to what Jeremiah explained last night at youth. Today, we're going to be kind of diving into those scriptures, and I'm going to give you times throughout the video to pause and read scriptures from Matthew 26, Matthew 27, John 13, Luke 17, and Matthew 6. 
Now, I want to give you two questions that have nothing to do really with anything, but they're kind of fun questions that you guys can be thinking about. Think about this. When do you officially consider someone old? And second, what, is, what are some of your big dreams and goals that you have for your life over the next 5, 10, 15 years? Now, I want to ask you guys a question before we jump in and I give you time to read some scriptures, but I want to ask you this. What does it mean to have mercy with someone? grace with someone, or even show someone forgiveness. What does that mean to you? You can pause and think about that, or we can keep going. You see, Jeremiah was defining God's mercy, grace, and forgiveness, and he defines them technically as this, the compassion and or forbearance that God shows mankind. That's God's mercy. God's grace is his unmerited favor, and God's forgiveness is choosing to bear the cost of an offense and release the offender rather than retaliating. In more simple terms, God's mercy is not getting something that we do deserve, and God's grace is Him giving us something that we don't deserve. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had someone deeply hurt you or betray you? And how did you handle it? Now, I'm going to give you guys a chance that's going to pop up on your screens, a chance to read Matthew 26, 14 to 16. So go ahead and pause and read that. Think back to the context that Jeremiah gave us. Can someone explain who Jesus is and what is happening in this story? Can you do that to yourself? Maybe write it down in a journal. Maybe talk to someone you're with. I just want to give you guys that opportunity. Now, I'm going to give you guys a chance to pause and read John 13, 18 through 30. Now guys, what stood out to you most in this scripture? Or what was challenging or hard to understand as you read through this piece of the Bible? Now I'm going to give you guys the chance to read both Matthew 26, 47 through 53 and Matthew 27, 3 through 5. Go ahead and read those for yourselves. In these texts, what does this teach us about people? What does it teach us about God? Again, I want to challenge you guys to pause and think on these things. Maybe journal them. Maybe write them down. We just want to get in the habit of thinking through these different things as we study the scriptures. Now, this morning, Jeremiah talked about sanctification, and that's a huge word. And I want to define that for you guys really quick. Sanctification is the process of becoming more like Jesus, or the process of becoming more like God. How and where do you see this taking place in your lives today? Where do you see the process of sanctification happening in your lives? Throughout the story, Jesus showed Judas mercy and grace. Judas got to eat with Jesus and his disciples. He still got his feet washed. Jesus didn't call down the angels or let Peter attack him as he was being arrested. Jesus showed Judas mercy and grace through all of these things, even though Jesus knew that Judas was going to and was betraying him. Now we have to ask ourselves the question, who did Judas go for, go to for forgiveness? He didn't go to Jesus. He went to the priests. And as we've learned, as we've read these different things, who's the only person that we can go to for forgiveness? That person is God or Jesus. That is the only person that we can go to for true forgiveness. Again, I want to challenge you guys to go back and watch Sunday morning's sermon if you haven't had the chance already, if you weren't there Sunday morning or you just haven't had the chance to yet. I want to challenge you guys to go and watch it. And I want to ask you this question. Did anything specifically stick out to you guys from the sermon? Jeremiah spoke this morning with the bottom line of, I am most like Jesus when I choose mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Now I want to ask you guys, last week we gave you the challenge of going and finding somewhere in your lives where you can serve. Did you do that? If not, that's okay. We want to challenge you guys to continue to put that into practice this week by going and serving someone or somewhere serving. But this week we want to add another challenge. This week, our challenge is to choose mercy, grace, and forgiveness like Jesus modeled for us. 
If we want to live in like Jesus, we must do the same by showing mercy, grace, and forgiveness. So your challenge this week is, where can you go and show mercy, grace, and forgiveness to others? Whether you're at home or school or on your sports team or somewhere else that you spend a lot of time, where can you show mercy, grace, and forgiveness just like Jesus does? All right, guys, that's all we've got for you this week. If you guys haven't had the chance to make it to a Sunday morning service, we want to challenge you guys to come at 1030 for our Overload Sundays here in the month of March leading up to Easter, and then join us for service Sunday mornings, and then be back for youth Sunday nights at 330 for middle school and 530 for high school. We hope to see you guys there, but if not, we'll see you guys next week here on the YouTube channel. Hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you guys later.